Hey, what's going on, guys? Mario DC Extinction Wrestlers here, and today we're going to be ranking all <clears throat> all main villains on the of the Flash from worst from best to worst. Now, as I said, best to worst, meaning the best is going to be in the top, and the worst is going to be in the end. So let's get started. So ranking our best main villain is Bloodwork. Now, the reason I think Bloodwork is the best main villain is that um. You know, you can really relate to him. He just, he isn't really a villain, if you really think about it. He's more of a good person. He just wants to defeat cancer. Just the, the ways he does it makes him a villain. Um, which, in my opinion, makes him pretty relatable. Boom. Um, I also like the CGI. I think the one thing I love is just the motivations he had. And the fact that he nearly tried to break Barry. It made made him a better villain than a lot of people think. As he kind of did broke Barry, which in my opinion made him really relatable. <clears throat> um, I think we can all agree that. <clears throat> um, Bloodwork also had the best character growth as he was like he kind of had the same motivations as Barry Allen. Just in a different sense, Barry wants to, you know, um, for, um, for knows that he's gonna die and decides to, um, to accept it, while well, Blood re refuses to. In my opinion, it makes so much more sense, and that the main villains actually do mirror the the motivation of the hero, hero as well, and also kind of origins, as both Barry and Ramsey lost their mother, so in completely different ways. Barry lost his mother due to the reverse flash. Bloodwork lost his mother due to the same cancer. So, my opinion makes both Vil both Barry and Ramsey more relatable as characters. And that's why I have to say Bloodwork is easily the best main villain on The Flash. Coming in number two, we have the Thinker or Clipper DeVoe. <clears throat> um, DeVoe is one of the best that's because just like Bloodwork, he's also relatable. You know, he's like um, Riddler or Poison Ivy from the comics where, you know, they have real life problems. They have like real problems, more specifically the mind problems. Like the Vo has um, uh, technophobia, which in my opinion works perfectly with the Flash. And it's something I really liked about the Flash, which is kind of gone nowadays where it's like it used to be a bit more realistic. It's something I really like about the Flash, that how it could handle realistic elements with also elements that are more non-realistic, like like the and like we're gonna get to with Savitar, and all that stuff. <clears throat> but in my opinion, I think DeVoe was so relatable, but where um, you know, you saw his problems. He just wants to make everyone intelligent without using technology. Makes him very relatable. Um, it, just the methods he used did not work with, would not work with Barry Allen in the slightest. And that's why I think DeVoe is my second favorite villain. Number three, we have Despero. Well, Despero was certainly overshadowed by Rhino Flash. Despero was a much better villain than the Rhino Flash. Um, Despero um, just wanted to prevent something that um could lead into an entire nation this is something we do learn about oh, um or this is why some m many youtubers make videos on like what if like this event never happened um because like despero all he wanted to do was just prevent and actually stop the flash which makes him very relatable because some of us as uh, in some people even think if we invent a time machine could we prevent like the holocaust or 9-11 it makes Despero more relatable as, you know, we want to kind of prevent those things because then America would be a much better country after that. But we can't. Um, and that's why I think Despero works so well as a... works so much better and more relatable was that he generally cared about the world up until episode part five where... On uh, Flash vs. Stream, which by the way, on his stream, on his stream, his reactions to, his reactions as well as Canada Grabs and Universe Scenes to my opinions on like,
flashes into his worst is the worst season of the show, or like worse than season seven, or Air Season Four is pretty good. Were hilarious. They were hilarious. <clears throat> um, yeah, check it out if you can. Um, because my god, they were just so funny. Anyways, let's get back on track. Um, like I, I think he said at some points where um Despero, I think in one of his live streams where he said Despero um eventually became just a Rick normal like villain, which in my opinion kind of drops him a bit. But overall, I think he's a much better villain despite being overshadowed by the Rhino Flash. Next up is Savitar. Now, Savitar is one of the best because of the fact that um, not only is his costume great, but his character is great. You know, I made a theory a while ago saying that maybe the original Savitar was in fact Adrian Chase or Prometheus. Because maybe Adrian Chase was the original Savitar. Which then led into him breaking Barry to a point where he just could no longer become the Flash. And eventually, Safi went crazy and began believing all that stuff. And Barry eventually becomes Savitar and goes back in time and tries to kill Iris. That's how I think my theory on Savitar works. Um, but Savitar is a great villain. Um, I think the... Uh, I think Savitar's concept works really well. To me, Savitar um, was um, had also had the best ancient tone. It's something I really like is when when superhero movies have like this very historical or more mythical tones. It works a lot very well for me, and it actually makes it feel more like the real world, where you know you see all these myths. And some some of it is real, some of it's not real, and you know the guys are going crazy. It, it it makes it makes the super it makes the film or TV show more unique and more interesting. Um, and that's something I like about Savitar. I like the Brahmastra tone, um, like themes, part of the character, <clears throat> all that stuff. It makes him very unique. And besides, he brought one of my favorite characters who unfortunately never comes back. Dr. Alchemy, god damn it, it's a, such a shame he's never in the show or even from the comics. It's insane. God, I wish he used Dr. Alchemy more. It's one of my favorite villains, I really wish they used him more. Anyways, let's get back on track. To me, Savitar also so has, um, my only problem with Savitar is really just the execution of his plan of killing Iris, which, by the way, I think that's everybody's one, only one main complaint about him. Um, yeah. And to me, he actually does make a lot of sense, so let's go on. Coming number five, we have Cicada. Now, much like Bloodwork and, um, DeVoe, Cicada also was very relatable because, you know, it's kind of like, like I said for my uh, Despero, you know, you never know, like, say this, like, like I said before with, like, Despero trying to prevent, like, the Flash, where I use real life events like 9-11 or Holocaust. You can also see in those, how, like, someone could turn out after those events, um, and that's where I think Cicada kind of falls in, where, you know, Cicada... Like, had a great motivation, you know, um, I mean, I mean, tr I mean, after his niece was injured, was n put in a coma from Metas, I think that works very well with me. I think it makes him more relatable, makes him feel like he actually knows what, he actually feels more like a good person than, say, Team Flash. Team Flash felt like horrible people compared to him, where, you know, that's how he thought, where, you know, he's trying to make... The world a better place for not only himself but others as well and killing Meadows was the best way to do that in my opinion works so well um now yes the canada did have one problem and i think it's just that his concept to me would have been a better villain on batwoman or arrow or shows that are meant to be more like realistic i think he could have worked in the nolan verse as well like to me i think cicada would have been better as a villain of Arrow. Let's be honest, he would have been a better villain on Arrow. 
which is really my only real complaint about him. Even then, that's more of a nitpick, really. We really think about it, that's more of a nitpick. Um, not like Zoom or the or other villains. It's kind of more like a Damien Dark scenario, but even then, he's still a great villain, in my opinion. At least his um, um, real motivations, you know, he generally cares about people. Um, he just doesn't have the same way to doing it. Uh, number six is Mirror Monarch. Now, if this was in season seven, she would easily be lower at this point. If this was in season six, she would have been higher. So, if this was like season six, top two, easily. Top in season seven, uh, around five or six, um, around that area. So, kind of shows you how disappointed I was with season seven. One of the main reasons I was very disappointed with season seven. Uh, yeah. God, this season had, was so disappointing. So much wasted potential. Anyways, Mirror Monitor to me uh, was a great villain. I really like how <clears throat> all, like, like how the character went from just try to try to get her company back, but realizing that um, all the horrible stuff it's been doing to others over the years. And her trying to prevent all those weapons from getting to the wrong hands, in my opinion, made her so relatable. And kind of remind you of, of like, business owners who are gone for, like, so long. And, like, um, over time when they realize their company has been developing weapons, makes you actually relate to her so much. And this is something I think The Flash has been doing not that much lately. It's just making relatable villains. Um, uh, well, aside from, like, Death's Bro and, like, the mirror monarch there's not that many relatable villains uh, aside from like blood work of the mirror monarch in my opinion mirror monarch was such a really well developed villain generally cared more about what she was trying to do than uh say um the um rhino flash i was more interested in uh what mirror what evil was coming was evil was doing then say well the time traveling rhino flash and i'm gonna keep calling him rhino flash for the majority of this video anyways let's go on to number seven and this is where we get into the okay to, to or meh to straight up i really hate this villain territory these villains either are either terrible or okay let's get started Number seven is Godspeed. Now, Godspeed to me is just an all right villain from in the show, at least in season seven. If it was season five or six, uh, A tier. Very good villain, very mysterious villain. You generally don't know anything about him. Makes him feel very intimidating and threatening. All that stuff. Season seven, on the other hand, the, just the voice he uses was weird. Like, I, like, when he said, Infinite Velocity, will soon be mine, I legit thought he said, Everybody will soon be mine. Like, that, it made it so weird. I, I like the idea of a Godspeed, Godspeed clone civil war. Only problem is, how, I think that my only real issue is this. You know, if Godspeed wants... The speed wants all. The, if all those guys please want the speed force, um, I just find it tough to believe that you're gonna get the speed force force by fighting each other. It just generally doesn't really add up. The the, the guys please plan didn't work for me, um, etc. 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 So where I see he's one of the better villains on the Flash, way better than say the Rhino Flash. But a pretty disappointing or a mad villain compared to Bloodwork or even Mirror Monarch. Um, yeah, Godspeed, I'd say an okay villain. Next up is the Speed Force. Now, this is where controversy is gonna happen. <sighs> controversy. Controversy, controversy, controversy. I don't think the Speed Force is a terrible villain. She just had so much wasted potential. To me, I like the idea of the Speed Force being the main villain of 
The Flash, especially in season seven, after everything that's been going on, Flashpoint, um, tricking her in season four, or Team Flash tricking her, killing her in season six, and bringing her back in season seven, then in Korean Forces. I think she would at that point would have broke, especially after that long, long. Um, to me, it makes her at least somewhat relatable, but the problem is, it's just that they didn't focus on that. You know, she never mentioned, well, Barry, you created the Flashpoint universe not that long ago. Really, if you really think about it, like, you created Flashpoint in, tw in like, in, tw in, like, 2016. It's 2021. Not that long ago. Or, or like, her saying, like, you remember uh, killing me in Crisis. Sis. All that stuff. It would have made her a very unique per antagonist to The Flash. Saying that um, Barry has to now remember all those events that he's created, like Flashpoint. I think that, that part, I think I would have loved the show, uh, the season, and the character of the Speed Force a lot more. Um, but apart from that, that is the part I think I hated about the Speed Force. She didn't really wasn't much of a threat, or even felt like a villain. It, like, the problem is, the, her, her reveal is like in like, very late. Um, if her reveal is like very late, then we don't get nearly as much time to sympathize with her. And her motivation wasn't great either. So, those are, so that's the speed force. <sighs> Finally, we're into the Rhino Flash. Now, if this was season one, he would be high. But now, but after constantly overshadowing many villains, I think the Rhino Flash deserves this spot. Eel Turtle, or Rhino Flash, as is what I'm gonna call him, was such a great villain in Season 1, but afterwards he turned into Eel, one of the most annoying supervillains ever. Season 2, I liked the episode where he brought back, but when you bring him back one more time, especially in something that doesn't make sense, yeah, so it's no wonder Season 2 is the worst season on The Flash. Season 3 and 4, they use him pretty well. Season 5, I did not like him in the slightest. Overshadowing Cicada was such a terrible idea. To me, Cicada was a more interesting villain than the Rhino Flash. To me, Cicada works far better than Rhino Flash. And to me, um, yeah. In Season 6, they also, in Season 6 and 7, they also handle Rhino Flash very well. Just mentioning him, um, or using, or in season six, at least trying to explain why the Rhino Flash keeps on coming back and it's through the negative speed force, which isn't technically a speed force, but more of a time thing or paradox thing, etc. That makes sense to me. Or how realistically he is now just energy, but uh, when he takes the mind of people, he will look like the person. It makes sense to me. And season seven also did uh, just use her for like what five minutes at best. But it's for season eight where I pretty much just drop it, sorry, no. Um, in season eight, the fact that now Armageddon was technically started by Rhino Flash made me hate Rhino Flash because now he's just so overused. At this point, he's overshadowed two main villains. He's caused more problems. It just doesn't add anything. It just makes him feel like He's the one villain everybody needs to come towards. I really hate when they use him all the time now. Not to mention on Legends, he sucked on Legends. He was so bad on Legends, even worse than he was on The Flash. So anyways guys, that's my ranking of all main villains of The Flash. Yes, I know I forgot one, but frankly, let's not talk about him, okay? And as always, I'll see you all next time. And this is actually the first video of 2022, so I'll see you all next time.